Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Power Hour on how to sell your listings faster, featuring Anton Stettner. My name is Shannon Shimabukuro. I'm a senior market leader trainer, and I am very excited to spend this next hour with you teaching you different strategies on how you can move more inventory in your area. So what is Market Leader Power Hour? Those of you that are new to Power Hours or to Market Leader in general, what you can expect every single week, the same day, Wednesday, the same time, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern, are either one of two types of classes, either a best practices type of class where we'll feature either an industry expert or one of your colleagues using the market leaders system out in the field doing really, really well, sharing unique strategies, or we'll have a call that's a workshop format where we're either diving into your market leader platform, showing you step by step on how to use a specific feature, or taking you step by step on how to implement strategies that you learned in the previous week. All right, so there are one or two formats. Today we're going to be, this is a best practices call, as we're featuring Anton Stettner, who I'll introduce you to in just one second. Another component of the Power Hours is you get to ask live Q&A on today's call. Now, there's usually so many of you, we can't always get to all of the questions, so we'll do our best to address all of the most common FAQs on today's call. And my team that I have chatting today, they're going to work really hard to respond to you and get back to every single question, but they might not get to all of them, so you can always follow up with our support team after the call if, if there's a question that went unanswered and the answers. All right, so what will you learn today? Today's agenda is all about helping you sell your listings faster. So today we're going to focus on what Anton does to set client expectations before he even walks in the door to take that listing presentation. Second, we'll walk you through his seller-proof pricing action plan, how he can ensure that the clients know when they need to reduce the prices, and how he can set them up for success and prepare them to do that. And third, you're going to see his marketing strategy on how he markets the home more effectively than anyone else. And of course, you'll have time to ask questions. OK, so that's what we're covering today. So before we get started, I would love to, to ask you all a quick poll. So I'm going to launch a quick poll to see where we're all at today and see what section you want us to focus the most time on. So which areas do you need the most help with today? Setting client expectations, pricing the home correctly, or marketing the home more effectively? Or maybe you're all of the above. So Anton and I will look at your, your poll answers and see where you're struggling the most. OK, I'm going to give it about five more seconds, a total of 20 seconds to go ahead and, to, by the way, to respond to the poll, just select your answer on your screen and then click Submit. OK. All right, over half the class has voted. All right, now I'm going to close the polls here. We'll see what everyone said. I'll click Share. All right, so it looks like the vast majority of the class says all of the above help us with everything. 17% says, I really need you to focus on helping me set client expectations. 9% on pricing the home, and 32% of you said marketing the home more effectively. So and everyone else, everything. So we are going to cover everything today. It was really helpful to know where you're struggling the most with. And it looks like marketing of the individuals is the biggest category there. So we'll spend more time there. All right, so now I'd love to introduce to you Anton Stettner. Anton, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. So thanks so much for being here today, Anton. Hey, thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure. So can you tell us a little bit about your market, what, um, where you're located in the nation? Because we have people joining us here from all over the US and Canada just to, to get us going. OK, perfect. Um, our main office is located in Marysville, Washington. And no one knows where that is. It's literally about 35 minutes north of Seattle, a small city. Uh, we run a team out of, uh, of Marysville. And we also run a, another small team out of the uh, Bellevue Market Center, too. Bellevue is over there in that Microsoft land. And um, you know, basically, just got a, a, 
uh, eight salespeople and uh, two full-time admin, two virtual assistants, and that is our team. Fantastic. So you are the leader of this team, right? That's me. <laughs> That's you. So did you start as a one-man band or did you join the team and kind of build it up from there? Great question. Um, you know, I went to college actually to get a degree in biochemistry and I was looking around one day at a company I was working for. They got bought and I got into real estate backwards like everyone else. In 2003, started as a one-man show. Uh, moved over to Keller Williams in 2004. Uh, they said hire an assistant. I started to hire an assistant, and then I hired a buyer's agent. And basically, started building a team in 2004. Uh, and this is probably, you know, kind of our seventh or eighth version of what, uh, you know, the, how the model is looked differently for the team. Fantastic. So I, I'm noticing you sent me some numbers of your track record over the past couple years of how many, you know, how much inventory and, and homes you've closed. So I'm noticing that it looks like you're just about almost doubling every single year what you were doing the previous year. What has attributed to that change in your business? It, you know, it's the, the most important thing for, for my business, for my team members, is you know, mindset, skill set, and habits. And so we've created habits of productivity. We're holding ourselves very accountable to our numbers. Like I was telling you before the call started, you know, we had a 7 a.m. accountability call with our team this morning. At 8.30, everyone did scripts and dialogues. And right after that, literally our whole team was starting to, uh, you know, prospect and dial for dollars. And so theoretically right now, the rest of them are finding someone to buy or sell some real estate. Fantastic. Now, how, what percentage of these homes closed? Like, let's look at this last year. 194 homes closed year-to-date so far, and I know that doesn't even include the ones you have pending right now that you haven't closed. So yeah. that's a very, very impressive number, especially given that we're only in October. Now, what percentage of that, since this call is focused more on the home selling process, would you say are attributed to, say, uh, to seller leads? Um, 113 of those were listings. We've always been uh, heavier on the listing side than on the buy side. Um, and it's because what we do in the morning is we focus on proactively hunting for sellers. Okay, great. And then I see a couple questions coming in. What does GCI mean? GCI is gross commission income. Gross commission income. Okay. All right. Well, fantastic, Anton. So, I mean, it sounds like you're more of a heavily focused on listings, as is your entire team. Um, and you've, we've chatted before this call so we could put together some of your strategies. So should we just dive in and walk them through sounds what your good. strategy is? Yeah, let's, let's rock and roll have some fun. All right. Sounds great. So before the appointment, I know you're really big on setting client expectations. What's the first step that you take when you try well, to, you know, get a lead? Yeah, well, the first step that we have uh, through lead, I mean, we're basically going lead, script, appointment. Once you have your appointment, you're going to start the qualifying process. And that qualifying process is basically this. Just because you have an appointment doesn't really even mean you want to go. You want, if you've got to ask some really basic questions. The first one is price. How much do you think your home is sell, will sell for? What do you think it's worth in today's market? Uh, next, you're going to want to know about motivation. Okay, a uh, way to ask that would be, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your level of motivation to sell the home? If a person's a 2, do you really want to talk to them? You know, next then we're going to be talking to them about uh, their time frame. You know, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, how long do you want uh, to sell your home? Or, or where do you need to move to? And how soon do you need to be there? Okay. okay. And then one of the really big ones that we try and focus on through our selling process is, is what's your dream? What are you trying to accomplish? Because the selling of a home is not a commodity process for us. It's, you know, we're helping someone who's in their family and everything is moving. So what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to take your family to a different location? Are you trying to get them into a bigger home? Are you trying to downsize? Help me understand what the dream is here. Okay. Um, next, you know, and it's really unfortunate that we have to ask this one, but, you know, what do you owe? What, uh, because we're trying to figure out what their net is. Because a lot of times if you ask the price question, they're not necessarily going to come right up and just give you the price. So sometimes you want to ask what do you owe and what are you expecting to net out of the property? That's another way to ask the price question. 
Okay. And then, uh, you know, this comes up a lot definitely in our market. Uh, one in four homeowners right now is, is a short sale. So if you're running into a roadblock where they're, you know, it seems like they're owing a, a lot or possibly more on the property and they keep uh, very sticking to the, the price, you're going to have to go through the dialogue of, you know, due to the current economic client, um, did you know that one in four homeowners is in a negative equity situation and may or may not be experiencing financial hardship? You know, does that really apply in this situation? The hints that pop up are like, I'm not going to sell my home below this price, or I have to sell it at this price, or I've got to sell it soon because something's going to happen. They're literally telling you, hey, I'm, I'm actually a short sale. So when you're going through these qualification types of questions, are you always face-to-face? -face? Are you able to get on the phone with them, or is this done over this, email? This would be before we go out to the – we're qualifying them before we go on the appointment. We. That's how we've been able to sell so many listings already this year, is we're going on appointments that we can win, appointments that we know the seller is motivated, appointments where we have a, a good idea that they're realistic about price, that we can help them to accomplish that dream. So this is an on-the-phone dialogue. Great. So there was actually quite a few questions that came in about how you, I mean, there's a lot of people that want to focus on listings, but they don't know how to find the listings. How do you actively hunt for listings so you can focus on listings? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, one of our virtual assistants, uh, his name is Joe Carr. Joe Carr emails everyone at 6 in the morning with a list of for sale by owners, a list of expired, and a list of notice of trustee sales. So all of our team members get a list in the morning that's prepared by one of our virtual assistants. Uh, they can choose to call through the list. They can choose to call uh, manually, just like expireds or uh, FISBOs out of like Craigslist, for instance. Um, we also operate uh, two auto dialers. We use uh, Vulcan 7 and uh, Mojo Cells. Vulcan, like Vulcan? Yeah, like A -O -L -C -A -N. Star Trek Vulcan. <laughs> what did you Vulcan say? Seven. Like Star Trek Vulcan. Like, like Vulcan Star Trek. 7. <laughs> okay, and what was the other example, Vulcan 7? Uh, Mojo Cells. Uh, there are two different types of auto dialers, and what they will allow you to do is they'll allow you to get through a lot of contacts. Uh, real estate is a numbers game, especially on the listing side, so it, it's a more about consistently hitting your contact goal. And when we're hunting expires, we would expect it's going to take about 33 uh, expired contacts to get a listing. Okay. All right. So it's just strictly a numbers game. So then if they qualify, so if they meet your standards on every single one of those bullet points, it's only then that you will even try to set up the appointment or Absolutely. make exceptions. No, uh, we've already set the appointment, so um, during our, basically it goes lead, script, set the appointment. And once I've set the appointment, then I qualify. And so I would say, okay. now Mr. Seller, so I can better serve you. When I come out on this appointment, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. Is now a good time? Got it. Lead, script, set the appointment, then qualify. Yeah. And... Uh, I know we're going to have it here at the end. We actually have that flowchart diagram as a uh, YouTube video that I made for my uh, teammates that they can watch that goes right through that process. Awesome. Okay. And then, yes, we do have that, and that's coming up right here. So then next is educate. So the next step you do is educate. And this is, is this still before the appointment? Yes. This is still before the appointment. So um, actually, if you just want to kind of pop up the next one, too. So we're going to call, email, or text just to confirm the appointment. And before we do that, literally once the appointment is scheduled, we're going to send them a pre-listing uh, package, which is just, hey, who we are, what we do. Uh, okay. We're going to send me what we call the Hire Me YouTube video, which is a it's kind of a jazzy, fun, high-paced uh, listing presentation. We're going to send them another YouTube video that stats about the market. We're going to send them an actual paper statistics about what's happening in their market. We're going to send them a copy of the CMA report. And then we're also then going to give them the homework worksheet that they want done. So when we call in to confirm the appointment, this is another qualifier. You call in and you say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, I sent you the information Do you, uh, on uh, you know, us, who we are, what we do in the market. You know, have you had an opportunity to look at that? And if they say no, you may want to then question, well, will you be able to review that before we come because I want to make the best use of your time. 
And you really want to make sure that they're reviewing that material before you get there because that speeds up your listing presentation and the, uh, the, it increases your conversion ratio on getting the actual listing. Fantastic. So what's included in this homework sheet? Um, on the homework sheet, basically, and I, I'd love to say this is the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world. Literally, guys, this is just a Word document we send them that we converted to a PDF. And it's got a list that basically just says, hey, please complete the property disclosure statement before we get there. And then we send them a blank property disclosure statement. We ask them to help us with the marketing description. And here's the verbiage for that. It says, um, I apologize. It says, uh, uh, hey, you bought this home because you fell in love with it. And your friends and family come over and they talk about what they like about your home. If you were to sell your home to someone else, what would be the points that you would write out? And so literally, we have the seller help us write the marketing description because they know everything about the property. Mm -hmm. The second thing, or third thing that we ask them is, hey, do you have any warranties? Do you have any house plans? Uh, do you have a survey? Anything that would be of interest to a buyer. Um, lastly, we, we ask for a copy of their house keys. So if you show up, and you're there in, in the house, and there's a copy of the keys, there's a, a survey, and you, you can see the marketing description is fully filled out, you know you have a very motivated seller who is really already sold on you, and you can have a shorter presentation. Okay. So for the marketing description, there's some people that are asking, you know, for this form. Is it just a question you're putting in this form, or is this an actual form you're having them fill out? It, it's, it's an actual form. And I'd love to tell you it's beautiful. It's literally just got a header at the top that's got our logo. And the homework sheet is, the, is like these five points. It says, please complete this so we can better serve you. It's got the five points. And then the marketing description one, it's just got some things they can circle on it. And then like eight lines where they can fill in. OK. All right. Sounds so great. Things that they can circle, it says like you know granite, hardwoods, um, stainless steel, it's just buzz items, uh, skylights, um, patio, three-car garage. You know, I didn't know this was a specific form. Would you mind, some people are asking if they can receive a copy of it. I don't know if that's something you're comfortable with, though. So. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll email it to you uh, uh, later today. Great, then I'll include it with the post-class notes. Thanks, Anton, that's really appreciated, I'm sure. Like everyone that's just typing, <laughs> can we have this please, is now saying thank you very much. All right. So thanks very much, Anton. So that's, that's really helpful. I mean, and fantastic information that you're doing to really set the stage for yourself to have a more successful appointment and make sure your time is well spent. I mean, talk about Absolutely. fantastic time management. That's great. So during the appointment then, you set the, you've set the stage already with the expectations. Yep. Yep. But what do you do for, as far as setting expectations of the tone? Yeah, and so you, 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 by qualifying them up front, and one of the things to remember is the more that you qualify up front, the more they respect you. This is like going to your doctor, going to your attorney. They ask really hard and tough questions, and you expect them to ask hard and tough questions. And so the client's respecting you, and you want to continue that respect when you show up by continuing to set the tone. So. Number one, we claim the territory. And what I mean by that is we walk in the door, we shake the hand, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, thank you for having us here. And we immediately walk over with our listing presentation and the notepad and put it on the kitchen table in a seat that we would like to sit in. Generally speaking, we don't grab the head of the table out of respect. We let that go to, uh, you know, the... Uh, the man of the house or you know the dominant person in the house and we try and grab a middle of a table so in other words if it's a rectangle we go on the long side the next thing um, we're looking for like I mentioned earlier is we're looking to see how much homework they did and then we're just going to do a quick walkthrough depending on whether or not they're a really friendly personality profile we're going to walk through with them if they're a more reserved personality profile we ask if they can just walk through th with them uh, sometimes we take a little bit of notes. Really, the walkthrough, though, should only take about five minutes. And I don't want to belabor the whole process. I just want to walk through, look at the home, confirm in my mind relative to the comps I have, this is what I was thinking. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do...
listing presentation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, my screen went black. Aha, I'm back. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to basically start the listing presentation. Um, so I think we'll go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, so this, this is, we love trial closes, we love qualifiers, so we're going to ask them, do you have any specific questions on the information you sent you, or would you like to get started talking about their home? In other words, if they reviewed the pre-listing package and looked at our marketing, they may have a question about how we sell real estate. Well, if we can get this objection right out, uh, taken care of right up front, we have a higher likelihood of converting it. Okay. The next one is we show a bit of indifference. And what I mean by that is we, there's a dialogue that happens somewhere right at the beginning of the listing presentations. We say one of three things is going to happen uh, today, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. One, you're going to choose to hire me, and I believe that's in your best interest. Two, you may choose not to hire me, in which case it may hurt my feelings. And notice how I said feeling because I, I only have one. And so I say feeling, I laugh, and sometimes I tease them a little bit. Or three, if I decide that I cannot meet or exceed all of your expectations, I'm going to bow out gracefully and not take this listing. And what I'm doing there is I'm maintaining that tone of professionalism and still setting that stage of, hey, if you're not going to play by my rules and price your home correctly and be a good fun seller to work with, we're not doing business together. Okay. So they know exactly what they're getting into, as do you, when you when you enter this business relationship with them. Absolutely. Okay. Now, there were some um, questions about the CMA, and Monica said, did you say you actually send the full CMA ahead of time with the pre-listing package before you even show up to the appointment? Um, I send the, uh, the comparables, and okay. I send a... Uh, a summary report of the comparables where it shows the averages. So I haven't told them the price, I've just given them some information. Now, if I'm going up against three people, I may not do that. If I'm going up against one person, I'm still probably going to do it. If I'm going up against five, I'm never going to do it. Got it. Okay. And then before this, I, I didn't ask you this question because you were on a roll. <laughs> but no, what happened? So. So back to the, the end of the qualify conversation. So we know what happens, right, if they do qualify. What if they don't qualify? How do you gracefully oh. send back out or cancel that appointment, or what do you do? Beautiful. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, based on our conversation here, it really actually sounds like I can't meet or exceed your expectations. And in which case, I'm going to, uh, at this point, bow out gracefully because I only want to work with people where I can fulfill their dreams. You do understand that, don't you? Yeah. And, and when you bow out gracefully like that, if they weren't motivated before by saying that you can't help them, 20%, sometimes as much as 30 or 40%, come back and they lower their price. <laughs> oh, got it. It's, it's, nobody likes to be told no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So what if they say they're interviewing a bunch of other agents? Great. When are those appointments going? There's no difference. You're either going to hire me, choose not to hire me, and you'll hurt my feeling, or I'll bow right. out. I mean, what they say, well, we really want to interview these five other agents as well. Uh, excellent. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what's going to be the criteria by which you select that agent? And so then they're going to give me what they're going to select. So if I could show you how we're going to meet X, are you ready to list with me today? Okay. And if they say no? Uh, you if they say no, you, get, you gotta ask. I still want to interview other people. I still want to interview other people. What are your goals by interviewing other people? See, most okay, people so quit after that first it. yes. You okay. gotta ask three or four qu questions. There's a great book, QBQ, the question behind the question. You gotta go three layers deep because the first question never answers it. Okay. Question behind the question. Love it. Okay. Thank you. Now the plan. Let's dive plan. into the plan. How do you set expectations with your plan? Yeah, I love it. I love it. So we go through, we talk about our marketing plan and uh, who we are, what we do, and things like that. And we're going to talk about the marketing plan. But after we're done with the marketing plan, I can see that we've inserted in one of our trial closes are, again right here. So once we're done with marketing, before we talk about price, we say, based on who we are and how we market the property, if we can agree on price, are you ready to list the home today? 
Because if they can't agree with who you are and how you sell homes, who cares what they think about the pro uh, what you think about the price or where it should be uh, priced at? Because they're not going to list with you. You know, so get them to agree to this first, overcome those objections. So the last thing you have to agree on is price. Right. So one of the things that we're going to do to create that proof so we can ask this question is, is we're going to leverage our website analytics. So for those of you that are market leader uh, users, you can see the screenshot down here. We went into the busy stats. And we're using this as actual visible proof to, to show we have demonstrable uh, visitors that we can market their home. Because one of the ways uh, that we market homes is we're extremely internet heavy. We do very little print besides postcards, um, but most of it comes from the internet. So we want to show proof on how we can attract people. We're going to show them the visitors. Another thing that we're going to show them, especially if they're in a really uh, high pack metro area, like if they're in Seattle, if they're in, in, in Everett, we're going to show them the total number of leads that we have looking in that zip code because it's very powerful for us versus the competition. Because I can come to them with a tangible result and say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, right now in Everett, I have 2,000 people looking for homes. Okay? Wow. okay? Is any other agent you're interviewing today showing you proof that they have actual buyers looking to buy your property? Okay, by doing things like that, you're immediately starting to gut the competition. Right. And you're, by showing them the proof of the visitor stats, you're, you're reaffirming that, yes, I do know what I'm doing, and I can actually prove it. Okay. Um, so this map, you could go for uh, oh, last month. You could go up to a year back. It's going to depend on the type of person you're talking to. So if you're talking to an engineer, or an accountant, you want to give them more of these details. If you're talking to a high-level executive, you want to give them the you want to give them the result, but you don't want to give them all of the details. You just want to show them the proof. Okay. okay yeah. And then a couple of people are asking, where are you finding this map? So again, this map is in the Market Leader Pro system, or if you're a Business Suite admin, you have access to what we call website analytics. So and it's under your admin tab. You go to website analytics you'll see a bar across the top of that screen with one of these icons and it says global stats. That's where you're finding this map. Okay, and you can adjust this time frame here, toggle button, to go back either a month or a year even if you'd like. Any time frame you choose. All right, so thanks Anton for that. So then you dive into the market. What, yeah. How does that discussion, or what does that discussion look like? So it, just to go back to, to my history real quick, even though it's not one of my core strengths and personality profiles, for some reason I went to college to be a biochemist. Um, and I'm a, I'm a driver and an influencer, if you understand the DISC test. But I actually have a, a fondness for numbers, because numbers tell a story that can't be argued. So what I'm going to talk to them about is I'm going to talk to them about the market. I'm going to walk them through what's happening in their market. Okay, so in other words, we're going to start at the county level. We're going to talk about the level of inventory and where prices are going. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to break it down to the neighborhood level. What's happening in that specific neighborhood? Just because a county may be depreciating doesn't mean that that particular neighborhood is not appreciating or vice versa. Right. We're also going to talk about where the market has gone. So in my Seattle metro here, we've actually dropped about uh, 41 to 50 percent since our peak, depending on the area. So we need to talk about that. And the reason for that, that's maintaining that exact same tone and expectation that we had talked about earlier, that, hey, if you bought this home in 2005, you're a short sale, no matter what. <laughs> right. Or you're paying to close it. Um, and then we're going to talk about, after we talk about the neighborhood, we're going to say, okay, now let's focus on what's going on with your house. That's when we grab that CMA averages, and we start to go through the averages, and we're going to talk about the averages in their square feet, in their uh, price, and how long they've been on the market for the actives, pendings, and sold. And I just circle them with a pen, or I highlight them, and I'm trying to get them to pay attention to those numbers as I'm sitting you know, side by side or across the table from them. Got it. So, after we've kind of gone through that and gone through the CMA averages, we go through the comparables, we do the same thing, and we get them to focus on specific comparables. This one is the most 
comparable to your house. This, com this comp is superior to your house because it has a Viking stove and a gourmet kitchen. Yours you know, does not have those items. This other one is inferior. Once we've gone through that, we then look at them, and there's another trial closed. It's basically based on this data, where do you feel your home should be priced in today's market? We want them to tell us. And at times, if you're depending on the type of personality profile you're dealing with, they're looking at the numbers. They just go, "Okay, okay, I get it. My home should be three hundred thousand." Okay. You know, and you don't have to go through all the comparables. Okay. Wow. It's just it's a story. I love that. I love how you walk them through that because it really it leads them to the answer. So it becomes their idea instead of you. Yes placing this number of value on their home, and they're just like, oh, but I want to get more, <laughs> you know, if they had a yes. preset notion of it. So. And the main thing to remember when talking with our sellers here is talk about the market. We never refer, we try to hardly refer to your house, uh, to I believe the price. Remove that from your vocabulary. The market says the data is showing us, the market is indicating Use those types of terminology because, number one, it makes you sound freaking awesome and professional, but number two, it makes it impersonal and not about them. It makes it about the market, especially if you're the bearer of the bad news. Anton, I think that's one of the most powerful, I mean, you've said a lot of amazing things so far, but like that is such a powerful statement. I hope everyone heard what you just said. Can you repeat that, please? Because that's just yeah, no, not, really not, important not everyone gets that. Yeah, it's... When, when we're talking about pricing, see, homes aren't commodities like we had discussed before. They're where someone lives. They raise their families there. There's all these emotions that are tied up with this, with this transaction. So what is their dream? How does that relate to Ford, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams? And then when you're talking about the price, please refer to it as the market says. The market is indicating. Based on the data, here's what we're seeing. Because then what you're doing is you're showing a very high level of professionalism, and you're giving them quantifiable and very specific numbers that they, if they can't argue with. Hey, 123 Main Street sold for 300. They can't say, well, you know, mine's got gold nails, so it should be worth 320. If got it's it. the same house, it's going to sell for 300. Right. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Um, pricing dialogue, one of the things I thought was really interesting in our pre-interview is when you're talking about the difference between a seller or an owner. Now, is this a question you ask at this stage in your presentation, or do you actually ask this question earlier? It, it really depends on whether or not they are challenging me in regards to price, or I'm being challenged right now in regards to price, or what specifically is happening. Because what this is, this is another form of a takeaway. So you have to use it to take something away. So Mr. or Mrs. Seller, the market will clearly decide on whether or not you are a seller or an owner. And you see, we only work with sellers. So which are you? Okay. Okay. And because you could use this, for example, if, if going back, let's say the homes were 300 and they want 330, I would then use it at this time. Okay. okay. Because based on the pricing that you're indicating, the market has indicated it won't bear that price, in which case you have actually just repurchased your home and made yourself an owner. And that's not what you want, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, then, And then you go in. Sorry, go ahead. And once we've established our price, we, we set the tone and the expectation again. So here's what's going to happen, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Okay, we're going to list this home at 300. And then after a week, if we don't get enough clicks on the internet, we don't get enough views on the MLS, we don't get enough showings, we're going to review the market, we're going to review the price, we're going to talk about the marketing, and in two to three weeks, we're going to, re we're going to have a, a, uh, a, a market to price adjustment. We're going to reduce the price accordingly based on the data. We're going to just have a price reduction, however you want to say that. And generally speaking, if we don't receive an offer within uh, five to seven showings, we've actually priced ourselves outside the market or our condition is worse than the other homes. And the reason you want to have that condition dialogue is if for some reason, let's just say they've got a cat box they won't clean up, 
-hmm. You've got to tell them that cat box is costing them five to ten thousand dollars. Okay. You know, All right, if so one two three Main Street sold for three hundred, we've had ten showings and we haven't sold for three hundred. Put the cat in the kennel. Get it rid okay. of it. Whatever it may be, because that's costing you five to ten thousand bucks. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's great to quantify exactly things like that. You know. Your cat has an odor, maybe, and this is going to taint people or, when they're first Or, you know, mow lawn, or weed right. the garden, or whatever it may be. Um, how we sell, and our goal of, of every buyer and every listing appointment, is, is we focus on these things. We want to educate the client. We want to then empower them to make a decision, and then we're going to ask them to make a decision. In other words, here's what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. We support them. We answer their questions. And then we said, now based on this, you know, uh, are you ready to list your home today? Is, is this where your home should be priced? Or how do you feel we should price your home? All right. Okay. Thank you very much. And some people are like, okay, well, it feels like we're talking about listing presentations, not selling a home faster. How no. important do you think your listing presentation is in selling a home faster? I mean, why are we spending so much time on this? It's 70% of it. Okay. Because so the guy who gets 113, home, you know, closed deals a year just from listings. Yeah, if, if you don't price the home powerful. correctly out of the gate, you're you're fighting the whole way through, and it's causing right. emotional strain on you and emotional strain on the seller. Right. Now, when you're talking about pricing the house right, you have a really fantastic action plan that you not only set the stage with and set an expectation with, but you carry out and you yes. stand behind. So can you walk us through what that price, that's, we call it seller-proof pricing action plan, <laughs> price reduction I mean, plan. Can you walk us through this? It's a four-week plan. It's, it's just a four-week plan, and by week three or week four, you should be getting a price reduction. But basically, week one, a phone call, you're going to review what's going on. You're going to talk about if any new properties have come on the market. Talk about your number of showings, your number of calls. Uh, it's presence on the internet, if it's receiving clicks on the website, if you're getting views. And then, if all possible, to be perfectly honest, I want to leave this as a voicemail. And the only reason for that is I don't necessarily need to talk to them about this. I just need them to have the information. Okay. Do you also okay. email it then, or just, or do you always try to just do a phone call with a voicemail? Um, I actually like the phone call the best because it's a personal high touch on that first week, and we don't want them to feel abandoned. Okay. But yes, okay. if I need to drive the point home or show them a property that has come on the market that's now priced lower than theirs, I'm going to email that to them. Do you show them this four-week plan before you actually put their house no. in the market? No. No? Okay. Okay, week two, we're going to send them stats. We're going to tell them what sold in the neighborhood, what didn't sell, what went pending. Uh, we're going to talk about if there's a short sale that may be driving down our price. We're going to talk about a new property that came on. We're going to start discussing price. Hey, based on where we're at, we're probably going to have to have a price adjustment. And then um, that one, a lot of times we send with an email, and we send a follow-up phone call to tell them we sent it to them. Okay. Email and phone okay. call for week two. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. Now, have you set the stage, though, to say if our house doesn't sell in four weeks, yes. then we are lowering the price? Well, you okay with that? that? I mean, do you say dialogue. it like that? Or? Go ahead. Yeah, and it, you would say it just to reiterate, like we had talked about during our listing presentation, if we don't receive an offer within two to three weeks or five to seven showings, we're going to be talking about uh, having a price reduction. Okay. And so right here, you're prepping them. Hey, we're on week two. Just as a reminder, we're going to be looking towards a price reduction in week three. Okay. Okay. So week three, we're going to be talking about the price reduction. We're going to give them updated market stats. And then also during this process, if there's some sort of news that comes out, email it to them that's about real estate. In other words, give them an item of value for something that's happening in the market Sign them up for the Market Insider thing uh, on your uh, Market Leader account. So you're giving them, I'd rather over-inform them of what's happening in the market and what the, the news is saying than not give them enough. Okay. So when we're looking at, this at point, it, we're, go ahead. Sorry. What if at oh, this ahead. point, though, the seller is pretty firm and they don't want to reduce their price? Um, you're going to have to start to have a dialogue about how you're going to fire them. Okay. 
because we'll give them the week four, but they're going to have to have a price reduction. Otherwise, we're going to talk about getting rid of them because why carry an overpriced listing? It's just causing you stress and the seller stress. Okay. And then week four? So if we didn't get a price reduction in week three, we're going to talk about getting a price correction. We're going to apologize. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I apologize. I was so excited about your home. I believe we may have overestimated what the market was telling us the value was. Okay? Okay. Um, uh, we may go look. So let's say a neighbor went pending. I may ask them if they want to go look at the neighbor's house to find out why they sold and we didn't. Um, just offering that is really good. Most people don't take you up. And um, just focus on the even price increments. We want to be even price increments because that helps with our uh, search engine results. Okay. Fantastic. And then you, you're really careful about how you price it. When you do correct the price, you don't do the, the grocery store pricing of 29 and 5, right? Yeah, uh, What's yeah. your strategy there? The, the reason for that is no one types in 99995. If we did 299,995, we'd actually be missing the buyer on the Internet that's searching from 300 to 325. Okay. And so you're doing yourself a disservice because the Internet won't allow you to capture that upper end buyer. You want to capture both the low and the high. So price at an even denomination if possible. Okay, great. Now, everyone, I, I know you're racing to write down notes right now and to try to write down every single script Anton's been saying. This call is being recorded, as are all of our power hours, and will be posted no later than tomorrow on our market leader dot com forward slash best practices page. So we'll we always send out the links after that call. So if you're new to the call, I just wanted to remind you of that, that you will have these slides in the form of the recording with Anton's voiceover, just like we're doing today. Okay, so just wanted you to know that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Anton. So that wraps up your four-week seller-proof price reduction or price <laughs> correction plan, we should, we should call it. Now, just curious. What percentage of the listings you've taken have you had to use that plan on to actually reduce the price? I mean, does it happen pretty frequently? Yeah, it really depends on the market. We're in such a hardcore seller's market right now that we're only having to do that to about 20% of our listings. Let's okay. go back 11 months when we were in a hardcore buyer's market when we had about 11 months' worth of inventory. Um, we were doing that with 80%. Okay. And so it's going to depend on whether you're in a buyer and a seller's market and whether you got a good price out of the gate. Okay. All right. Well, we have a just uh, just about 10 minutes left before we need to get to questions. So now let's talk about marketing the house for sale. So I know preparing is half the battle. Can we talk through this quickly and then get through the oops, get to the marketing plan. Yeah. So if we're if we're going over 700,000, we're going to do full staging and bring in a staging consultant. In the four to four to seven, we're going to bring in a staging consultant to move around furniture. Um, we're going to shoot uh, high-level professional photography. This is the biggest thing you can do to get your listing sold. Um, we can, I can show you that our internet uh, clicks and leads go up from our ones where we shoot professional versus non-professional. And so our guy, he goes out there with like a a, a light meter. He shoots the picture at 12 different exposure levels, drops it into Photoshop, and then merges all those images together. So you get some unbelievable, beautiful images. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask the seller to, to do what we call a fluff and buff. Clean, mow the yard, wash all the windows, blah, blah. You know, maybe some new color plants up by the front door. Okay, great. All right, and then marketing the house for sale is obviously really important, getting the word out to get maximize your exposure. So what's your big picture plan? And then let's dive through these individually. Yeah, not a problem. You know, the big picture plan is we're, we're going to spam postcards to the neighborhood. Uh, direct mail is really starting to work for us again because I think no other real estate agents are really doing much direct mail right now. And then also, as consumers, we're not getting as much direct mail anymore. Um, so we're going to postcard the neighborhood eight times with a, a similar postcard every single time. Uh, we do virtual tours. Uh, we're going to make uh, some, some videos for the property. Uh, we're going to run a bunch of Craigslist ads, uh, real bird, lots of pay-per-click. We're going to make some blog posts. In other words, what we do is we're going to go expose this property to the Internet 
at the highest level and just spam it everywhere. Got it. All right. So you said something about, you know, you're now focusing a lot more on direct mail because not it's a separator out there. And you sent out eight pieces for every listing. So just so everyone knows, here's a copy of a bunch of different ideas of different postcards that you currently send out. Is this right? Yeah. Yes, correct. And the, the postcard doesn't change. You can see the, 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 the Rambler uh, down there in the, in the bottom right corner. And the, we sent out the same picture. And all we do is change the message uh, uh, across the front and then write something different on the back. So they're starting to see the exact same thing over and over and over again. So they know that this is coming from the same person. Got it. So you went from just listed to now pending financing. Change the wording up here as well. Yeah. You click again, pending inspection. So it's the same exact postcard, same high quality photos that you have here. Yep. Yep. And then do you use your professional photographer even for lower end listings? Uh, not always. It, okay. So a lot of our lower end listings, unfortunately, are going to be short sales and bank owned properties. Okay. So then you don't. All right. And then one thing that you mentioned earlier to me is you use this, what you call your pick your neighbor program. So you use this to not just sell the house, but also to prospect. And I think this is a yeah. really, it's a fun program. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? This, this, this has been very helpful for us, you guys. And I, I recommend implementing something similar to this. So what you're doing is one of your postcards that you would do is you would invite them to an open house. In our area, because we're in a hardcore seller's market, we're at 2.2 .2 months worth of inventory. Uh, an open house is a phenomenal event again. And so we're going to send them a postcard about an open house. We're going to invite them to it. And then a day or two before, we're going to walk with just a flyer to the property and knock on the door. We're going to say, hi, my name is Anton Stetner with Keller Williams Realty. I'd like to invite you to the open house over here at the Smith property that we're having. And that's, you know, Saturday. And right now we're running the Pick Your Neighbor program. And what that means is if you know of anyone who's looking to live in this neighborhood, uh, we'd like to offer them a free inspection on, the, on this property. Do you know of anyone who's, you know, thinking about moving into this neighborhood? And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to ask for a referral. Do you know of anyone who's thinking about buying or selling any real estate? Do you have any questions about the market in general that I could help you out with because I've taken a few moments of your time? Great. Love it. You're making connections with the neighbors. They're saying your name. You're branding yeah. yourself. And you have this really memorable photo. <laughs> Yeah. And they're getting spammed with postcards. And they're getting spammed with postcards. Fantastic. Love it. And that, that script, everyone, I do have available in the post-class handout notes. So you'll have that available as well. So videos, it's also a really powerful part of your strategy. Can you it, talk it, a little it, bit it more about It is because that? this helps you definitely get your upper end listings too. And I think all of your sellers are starting to want to see things like this. So we'll use, uh, you know, Visual Tour is one of the things that we use. We use Animoto uh, to make slideshow video presentations. And then we're going to make full videos. So the home that we showed you in Redmond, uh, we actually made a full video of that one uh, with, you know, beautiful music and stuff like that. And we use PowerDirector to edit that. We're going to upload those videos to YouTube, and then we're going to promote them via uh, Facebook. So, like, personally, I'll promote it on my own Facebook. We'll kick it to our fan page. We'll do some blog posts about it. We'll put it out to Twitter. We're going to attach it to a property profile in the MLS. Um, we're going to attach it to our property profile on our website. We just want to get that out there. Okay. You mentioned RealBird earlier. What do you use RealBird for? RealBird is it's, it's a, another syndication tool that you can that you can pay for, and it's not that expensive. And so it just creates a property. Uh, uh, profile for each one that syndicates to a bunch of websites. It's our number 19 source of traffic to our website actually driving back. So it works pretty well for us. Plus right. we have it uh, feeding all of our blog posts. So it creates a little SEO juice because of the number of uh, listings that we have. Okay. And then the last strategy um, we have to discuss is Craigslist. So you yeah, use so, this property in a bunch of different ways, right, in Craigslist. <laughs> so we're going to take every listing we can and basically exploit it inside of Craigslist. We're going to run three to eight different ads uh, for each one. So, for, for example, this one right here is a home that we have listed right now. And this is our open house daily. Hey, we're running an open house daily. Call for times. Well, Technically, we're not running an open house daily, but if someone called and said, hey, are you going to be there at 2? Yes, I will. 
<laughs> Fair enough. So you, you use the same photo of, of a picture, you put in a link to the all Mill Creek homes to your market leader website, yep. put in a link to the you know the home detail page, and then you also have an open house call for time. So you, you use yep. the header to use different phishing techniques. Yeah, so, so we're going to probably have two to four calls to action. We may not include a phone number, and we're going to have at least two links to something else. So this one right here. Um, I'm getting Nancy oh, to move on. <laughs> not a problem. Go, go to the next one. That's fine. Okay. And so this next one, basically, we just use the market leader posting tool, and then we actually have a second call to action right at the bottom, free list of distressed properties. We're just taking that URL from the top. We're dropping them into the landing page. We're using this to drive a lot of traffic. And one of the things, too, is if one of my clients was to say, how many clicks have you got, I could literally go into my analytics on my websites, and I could tell them, well, you know, 1,100 people have looked at this property. We've had five showings. You know, and we haven't received an offer. Wouldn't you agree that's a lot of exposure? Right. So it's not your fault. You know, so this, yeah, <laughs> so like, this, it's this out there. They're just the market's rejecting your price. Do exactly. I sound like, do I sound like an Anton wannabe yet? <laughs> yeah. No, the, the market, that was actually beautiful. So l let's go to example three. Okay. Here we go. So example three, notice how there's just no picture. All we're saying is a four-bedroom home in Mill Creek. This is an ultra-generic one. Uh, we are giving the full listing detail as the first one, and then we're just straight giving them a search on the second one. With okay. all of our Craigslist ads, we're doing the, uh, uh, the Craigslist uh, ad tracker as our tool, and so we're using all of these to be able to see which one of our ads are getting the most uh, views, and then we're going into our analytics to see which ones are then going from views to conversions and trying to tweak. I can tell you that ones with really stupid things in the header, um, ones that have extra characters, ones that say things like troll-free home, uh, no zombies live here, uh, waterfront, or I can't believe they're going to price it at this price, um, just things like that seem to be our best performing ads. Okay. So for um, an, here's, here's an example of another one. Like Mill Creek Homes. With a homes. Bunch of yeah, and maybe we'll take the S's and change it into cash symbols. Uh, just little things like that to make us different. And we're only going to post like three different ads at a time, three to five, and then we're going to wait a little bit and post a little bit more. If you're going to go spam in 20 ads all at the same time, you're actually not going to get as good a result if you post a little, come back, post a little, come back, post a little. Now, I know Craigslist usually says, you know, you should be marketing just individual properties here, not lists and things like that. Do you get flagged a lot? Uh, we have nine different Craigslist accounts. Okay. So you have workarounds. Yeah, and so if we get flagged, oh, oh well. Um, this is a quantity thing. This is just like prospecting to sellers. The more you have out there, it's, it's like fishing. The more hooks and bait you have in the water, the more results you're going to get. Are all of them going to work? No. Right, and then some people are asking about Craigslist Ad Tracker. And Craigslist Ad Tracker, it's not Ad Tracker, Ad Tracker. Just go to Craigslist, Google CraigslistAdTracker.com. It's a free site that you can do is to plug in your, your um, Craigslist ads, and then it will spit out analytics and even links that you can use to post on yeah. Craigslist to track them. Yeah, and then we pay for like, I don't know, I think it's like the $50 version just because we want to be able to have multiple users running multiple different ads and higher level analytics. Okay, great. So just to summarize, and, and Anton, thank you so much. You've been really just providing us so much great information today. So the way you sell your home faster, if, if I'm summarizing right, is first sure. you qualify before you even yep. get to the appointment. You educate them with materials before you get to the appointment and during the appointment. You set the tone. You have a solid marketing plan. You explain about the market. You show the numbers. Yep. You use your price reduction action plan or price correction yep. action plan, and then you yep. have a really strategic marketing plan to maximize exposure. Do we miss anything? Uh, no. I mean, one of the things to understand is we're going to flood the Internet with this. And when I mean that, I mean it, this is every listing is going on Tumblr, Posterous. It's going on Flickr. It's going on Facebook. It's going on our WordPress website. We're running many Craigslist ads. We're going to run little pay-per-click ads. And so 
we're not going to go spend ludicrous amounts of money because a lot of these things are just man hour type like things, but we're going to put quite a few man hours into just really pushing that out there. Okay. Fantastic. And thank you. Thank you so much. So real quick, I'm just going to do some brief, brief housekeeping for everyone on the call before we dive into questions. So next week's Power Hour, for those of you that sign up, what we're doing is we're covering the newest features that we're launching in a release that we're releasing on Monday night of next week. So on Wednesday, all these new fun features are going to be live in your system. We're going to tell you what they all are and how you can leverage them, as well as give you some Halloween tips and tricks and how to find those pieces and how to use those pieces so you can send them out in time for Halloween. Um, again, same time, same place, Wednesday, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 o'clock Eastern. Your homework from today's call, as you all know, we like to give out homework because you don't use what you just learned. You're not going to be leveraging this time you just spent with Anton learning from him. So we want you to pick a new tool to help you sell a listing faster, whether you're going to start trying to use video or Craigslist or group emailing contacts or creating a referral program like the Take Your Neighbor program. Um, copying is the best form of flattery, right, Anton? <laughs> so, so I don't have an original to... bone in my body. Every, all of this someone else did. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's just... Figure out you know, what, what strategies is Anton doing that you think will work for you, that you can implement, and act on it. Register for next week's Power Hour, and then fill out the post-class survey, please. And I will, I'm compiling some notes that I'll be sending to you guys later, probably early this evening. I'll get them out to you. So make sure you fill that out. So now we're going to take questions. Um, and as always, in this little blue box, if you want more information on anything, if you want more, you know, if you have a support issue, if you need more leads, your pro user, business suite owner, there's numbers to call and links to the recordings as well as short tutorials. But again, I'll put this information in the post-class handout as well. All right, so Anton, we've got three minutes to try to answer a lot of questions here. And I apologize, everyone, we're not going to get to all of your questions today. But can we just give Anton a quick thank you for being here? He's spending time out of his day to share with us. All right, Anton, we have lots of people saying thank you. There's about 500 people on today's call, all with thank you. So, and I'm applause and great job and they really appreciate all this information you're sharing so thank you um, okay so questions let's see here um, I think I've, we've asked a lot of these which web analytics graph that you use and where to find it so that looks like that's an FAQ um, I'm going to table that question as I try to pull it up so I can show you all well um, Anton answers the next one let's see here do you purchase leads do you purchase seller leads? That's one of the uh, yes. FAQs. You do? What are the differences? Yes. Do you mind sharing some of the sources you buy them from? Um, we buy them from um, uh, Zillow, Trulia, and through the uh, House Values uh, Market Leader. OK. So the, and you can find them more about that if you dial these phone numbers. OK, yep. great. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Repeat the names of the auto dialers that you use. And I um, Mojo the, Cells. Mojo Cells. M O J O S E L L S. Yep. And and then Vulcan Seven. Vulcan Seven. Okay. Great. Um, and Vulcan Seven is geo specific. So if there's someone in your area, they won't give it to you. And that's the actual cool one. Cool thing about that. And Vulcan Seven will grab cell phone numbers because uh, they have like a proprietary data search that they do. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Um, let's see here. How do you handle sellers that don't want to complete the homework sheet before you get there? Ask yourself if you actually want to go on the appointment. Okay. In, in other words, it, 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 so let, let, let's just say the seller says, I'm not going to complete it. Now, let me ask you this, Mr. Seller. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you raise your level of motivation to sell a home? I'm a 6. Well, what about why do you say you're a 6? Okay, so you're saying you're actually more motivated than the average person, and yet you don't want to do what's necessary in order to get your home sold. Would you like to tell me more about that? And just ask the question. If, if they say they're motivated, they say price, and they're not going to complete it before I go there, I'm still going because if I've got a good at-bat because I know like they're priced, they're going to be priced well, who cares? I just know that it's going to be a longer listing presentation. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. What if, what service do you use for your virtual assistants? 
And how did you create um, uh, Odesk.com. Odesk.com. All right. Odesk.com. And I had to go through two to find the ones I liked. Okay. So it wasn't a one a one hit wonder, so to speak. Yes, correct. And you've got to interview them, and you've got to be comfortable typing, typing out like you were basically explaining the baby steps of everything, start to finish. But they follow it start to finish and do on do an awesome job. It's just you've got to be able to explain. So don't expect you to just hand them something and make it happen. Okay. Somebody wanted to see the direct mail examples again, so I pulled that slide up for them. And then. Um, Another question was, where do I find, so lots of questions around finding that, that global stats graph. So I'm going to pull that over here. So in your market leader account under admin, if, it's, if you have an account that's enabled for it, you'll see website analytics as an option here under admin. All right? When you click website analytics, then you'll see this, this globe icon that says global stats. Oh, I don't have it enabled for this account. So let's see here, global stats, let me try it again. There it goes. I don't know what happened. Needed to be refreshed. So if you click on global stats, you just go back a year and click so, go. So e even with that one right there, I mean, that's the beauty of it. You could say, even today, I've had 22 sellers in Washington, or 22 buyers in Washington look for a home. Is any of my competition have that? Right. I mean, right. that's one day. Right, absolutely. So that's fantastic. And you have people. It's really fun, too, because you can actually expand this graph out. You can choose a map from you know, Canada. So if you're up in, you, know, you can see where people came in from in Canada. I mean, if they had anybody, you can choose them from all over the world. So it's a really, it's a really fun section to play around in. All right, so that's where that map is. And it looks like we just hit the hour. So, so sorry, everyone. We are going to have to end the call. We like to start in and on time so you can plan your day around this hour. But Anton, big thank you for being here. Oh, let me show the screen. If you guys would like to get in touch with Anton, send him a thank you. Or I really, really highly recommend go to visit his YouTube account, youtube.com forward slash Anton Stetner, S-T-E-T-N-E-R. He's got a lot of great videos on there. And you can follow him and get ideas for different types of videos that you can use. It's a really fantastic marketing channel or connect with them on Facebook if you have any questions. And Anton, there was somebody that you sold the house to their parents on this call. They recognized your picture. You have a very memorable picture here. So <laughs> thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and they're from hey, Nebraska, you. So they, and you did a great job. So they said thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, you know, thank you guys for attending. If there was a question that you didn't get answered, hey, send me a, uh, a, a tweet. Send me a Facebook message. Uh, you know, a message on YouTube, whatever, and I'll do my best to help you guys out. That's so generous of you, Anton. Thank you. And I'll, I'll send out links to his different places to connect with him in the post-class notes. So everyone, I hope this is time well spent today. I know it was for me. I learned a lot, Anton. Thanks to you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you all next week. And Anton, big thank you to you. A lot of people are typing in. You're amazing. Thank you for sharing everything you made their day. So, all right. You. Thank you, guys. All right. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Goodbye.